All right, today I'm gonna to go into collar correction. And so this is gonna be cleaning up this collar cast. Notice how the video that I'm working with, it's very warm, uh, the skin tones don't look quite natural. It's a bit darker. Uh, this is gonna be cleaning this up and making it look correct, as if I were standing there looking at the person in front of me. This is not collar grading. And the reason being is I would recommend you do this first before you do a grade on a video. That way you're getting it natural and you're starting from a good clean palette to then add that cinematic look to it. All right, I am in the collar page within DaVinci Resolve. First thing I wanna do before I get into the collar is I want to adjust my luminosity and my brightness and get the uh, bright and shadows looking correct. So I'm gonna go down over here to the right and I'm gonna click on scopes and this will bring up my scopes and this is telling us something right away. You can see there's a lot of red here, not much blue. The idea is we're gonna to want to balance this out. We'll get to that in a bit. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch from a parade scope to a waveform which gives me a similar kind of a thing. You can tell a lot of reds, not as much blue, but what this is also telling us is the image from the left to right. So notice on the left here, we don't have this kind of fuzziness looking. It's very, just a bit in the middle. And then same on the right. That's because you can see on the left and the right are these walls that are very, that are gonna be exactly the same from top to bottom. The bottom is all your blacks. The top is gonna to be all your whites. So we've got some blacks here most likely from the microwave and tea kettle. I'm gonna turn the collar off on this. So I'm gonna click on this settings, click on the Y here, and notice now we're not looking at that and I'm gonna get rid of the collar. So we're just looking at some straight uh, black and white here to adjust our brightness. Now I'm gonna jump over to my collar wheels. With the collar wheels, our offset is gonna be your overall of the image. Your gain is gonna be your highlights, so that'll just like the highlights. Your gammas are gonna be the mid-tone adjustments, and the lift is gonna be your shadows. So let's start with looking at just the overall image a little bit, and I wanna brighten it up a little bit. So I don't wanna click within the collar wheel because that's gonna adjust the color and I don't want to work with that. I just want to work with the overall brightness and darkness. So down below here, we've got this little bit here. You can just click with your mouse and you can drag to the right and notice what it's doing. And you can see in my scopes onto the right there is it's bringing the whole thing up a little bit. And I don't want to do it too much. I just want to do it a tiny little bit. If you've gone too far, you can reset it. Just click that little icon there and it'll reset it to where you want it. So I just want to bring it up just a little bit because really I'm gonna focus on my different spaces. All right, let's start with our shadows. So this video is pretty good. There's not a lot of shadows. The darkness are supposed to be black, which as we can see here, and it's a little below zero, which is fine. But if you do need to adjust the shadows in yours, go over to your lift, which we mentioned was the shadows, right underneath it, just click with your mouse and just kind of pull it a little bit to the right. And you'll notice that in your scopes, that's going up and down. So we're just focused on the shadows. Don't worry about the rest of it and get those shadows where you want them to be for your video. And they're pretty much exactly right where I want them to be. Let's save our midtones for last and let's go to our gain, which is gonna be our highlights. So again, we can see we've got a lot of highlights going on here, especially here. Well, again, that's supposed to be pretty bright right there because there's those lights under the sink, but I am gonna to wanna to bring it down and I'm gonna click on there. I'm just gonna pull that a little bit to the left and bring that down so that it's just not quite as bad and so that it hasn't peaked out. Now I'm gonna get into my midtones, which is really the main bit of this video. So let's jump over to my gamma and let's click on that. And I'm gonna to wanna to bring that up a bit more. Just kind of level, get that nice and bright. See, already it's looking much more natural. But now what happened? Well, now we're getting a bit too much with my blacks. So let's bring those down just a bit more then. There we go. 
So you can kind of keep going back and readjusting it. And as always, if you go too far one way or whatever, you can always hit that reset. Notice up here, we do have a reset also. That will reset everything if you want to start over from scratch. Okay, now let's start playing with color a little bit. I'm going to play with the contrast a little bit more later as well, because uh, it does still look a bit too flat for me, but we'll move on so this video doesn't go along too long. So as you can see, the temperature is definitely very warm on this. Well, down here we've got a temperature option. So in this case, you just highlight it with your mouse and you can drag it left or right. And in my case, I'm gonna go a bit to the left and notice again, everything's moving. I'm gonna now re-add the collar to my waveforms though. So let's switch back to the paratoscope. And that'll give me a bit more information because now I'm starting to care about the collar a bit. And you can always double click you can always click within the temperature as well and type in numbers if you want, or like I said, drag and move it around. If you need to reset it, just click on the word. So double click on temp and it took it back to zero. So let's bring that temperature down a little bit and let's add a little bit of, drop the tint just a hair, not too much. It's not too bad there. Contrast, I mentioned, I do think it's a bit soft, so I'm going to up my contrast a little bit, not too much, uh, with, again, I want this to look natural as if I were standing there staring at it. Okay, now that I've got that, I'm going to jump down here a little bit as well. So notice we have these ones down here that I haven't really touched. I'm going to up my saturation a little bit. It's not too bad. If you were shooting in, say, like a flat log file or something like that, you'll probably want to play with this a little bit. In my case, I think I'm just going to go up to 60. Oh, that's way too far. Let's reset it. Maybe let's just do 55. That's a little better. And you can adjust your, again, you can adjust your highlights and so forth and so on. I'm going to bring my highlights down just a little bit and you notice it's actually narrowing this field up a little bit because I think that's part of the problem with this particular one is with all this white, it's reflecting pretty much everything. Let's bring our shadows up just a bit. And there we go, I'm gonna drop my collar. So yeah, looking much more natural now, much more like humans would look like. Uh, still very, I'm gonna leave my hue where it is, I think that's pretty good. Now I'm gonna work on this collar a bit more. We're still very red. We've still got a lot of blue all over the place, which is a bit low. And uh, you can see the skin tones are definitely off. So within the video viewer, right click, and you've got this option here that says show picker RGB value. Click on that and check that if it's not checked already. Mine was already checked. Notice what I had to do there, and that was because I had checked mine but then had clicked off of it, so I needed to go over to the qualifier and do a quick drop down to reselect it, and I know now that it's active because it is highlighted. And now notice when I go over the image, I'm getting this RGB readout, and you can see I'm highlighting over his white t-shirt, which is a pretty neutral color. You want to find your grays or your whites in the video so that that way that's going to give you where those should be level. So my R is 184, my B is 146. On the skin, certainly we would expect the red to be a bit brighter, um, depending on what you're highlighting over. So you can go through different sections of the video and see where that's a bit off. And what I care about right now is going to be this white here where we're seeing our red still quite high. So since we can see that red overall is still quite dominant, I'm going to go down to my collar wheel and I want to actually get it away from the red. And the reason why I'm picking the gain is because it's overall, it's really getting that light. So I'm going to pull this a bit to the right and you notice the levels are adjusting underneath. You can also take your mouse over and click and draw left and right in order to adjust and continue to use those scopes that over here in order to make sure you're leveling everything out. Or what you can also do is click here. That's going to bring up your collar bars. And notice now we've got bars 
which are a little easier to work with. And so I can click in my bars and I can drag that red down. And notice as you drag one thing down, it pops up something else a little bit. So my red's now a bit less, but too far because it really kind of took my green up, didn't it? And let's bring the blue up to balance this out. Now we're looking a bit better there. And when I go up with my mouse, you can see I'm highlighting over. So red's still quite dominant there. Red dominant there, so that's good. The white t-shirt, 180, 160, we still got a lot of reds in that brightness. So I'll go back down to my gain again, and I want to bring that red down, but just a little bit. So instead of clicking on it and dragging, which kind of hard to get exact controls, you can just highlight it. And then you, if you have a track wheel on your mouse, you can just scroll up and down with that track wheel. And that'll allow you to go just by a much more finer of an option. 91, yeah, that's looking pretty good. They're looking pretty level. I'm gonna bring my blue up still just a pinch more. Now, let's say red 177, 158, 143. Yeah, so it's still gonna be different because of whatever scene it is you're working with. But of course, compared to how it looked originally, it's much better. Okay, so let's take a quick look here. You can see, um, I could probably still play with this a bit more, but this is a tutorial, so I don't wanna spend too much time on it. If you want to see the before and after, just click this right up here. That'll turn that off, and you can see there's my before, there's my after. So certainly much better, still feels a bit flat, and I still feel that collar is a bit off, but um, I'm not going to play with it anymore. You get the idea on how and what to use in order to get this a bit more natural looking. Well, let's say I have another clip, as you can see here, and I don't want to go through all of that over again. You can do a shot match. So all you need to do that there is click the clip that you want to match to. So notice now that one's got an orange line around it. Now I go back to my original clip and I right click on it and you've got this one here, shot match to clip. So click on that and notice what it does is it matches that to the first clip. Keep in mind if you do this it can be a bit slow sometimes. So if you do that shot match and it seems like nothing ha is happening give it a minute. It actually is processing it and copying everything over so that that way uh, it is going to match. And again, if I click off, you can see original and new. Uh, so that's it. That's basic color correction. I'll be doing some more on creating like a grading and that kind of stuff. So uh, feel free to subscribe if you want to uh, check out some of those videos that are coming up.